Would you stand as we pray together this morning? Our Father in heaven, as we come to this fifth sermon in our series on the Spirit-filled life, I pray, O oh God, that you would speak to our hearts today. I pray, O oh God, that each one of us that know you as our personal Lord and Savior, that we would each day be filled up with the Spirit of the living God. Father, speak to our hearts, I pray, in Christ's name, amen. This is uh, the fifth uh, sermon in our series on the Spirit-filled life. If you will remember the first Sunday that we started the series, we spoke about the Holy Spirit, your best friend. And then on the second Sunday, we looked at the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. And then the third Sunday, we looked at the Holy Spirit, the wind of God. And last Sunday morning, we looked at the Holy Spirit, the water of God. And today, we are looking at being filled, the filling of the Holy Spirit. There's a question this morning that's very fundamental to each of our lives, and that question is this, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Can you say, I'm a Spirit-filled Christian? If you're not sure, because maybe you don't understand what we mean by a spiritual Christian or what that looks like to, to have uh, the Holy Spirit in your heart and life. I hope this message this morning will begin to answer that question for you. As we look at the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 this morning, verses 15 through 20, the Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus. He was writing to these Ephesian Christians when he said, see then that you walk circumspectly. Young people, that word there just means carefully. It means cautiously. Uh, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation. That word dissipation means like a wasting away. And so he says, do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, some years ago, down in Fort Worth, Texas, there was a young man who wanted to become a pilot. And he was taking flying lessons from his instructor. And there came a time when the instructor felt that this uh, young trainee would be able to take control of the plane and fly it, knowing that he, being the pilot, would be there close by in case something happened that he needed to take back control of the plane. Uh, when this particular trainee received control from the pilot of the, of the plane, this trainee, he just absolutely froze with panic. He froze with fear. He couldn't respond. And the pilot kept saying, turn over the controls. In other words, give the controls back to me. And three different times that Pilot said to that trainee, turn over the controls, turn over the controls, turn over the controls. Unfortunately, that young man was so stiffened by his panic and by his fear, the plane went down, it crashed, killing both the trainee as well as the pilot. There are tragic things that can happen to the life of a Christian Oh, whenever we don't turn over the control of our life to the Holy Spirit. You see, to be filled with the Holy Spirit means to allow the Holy Spirit to control our lives, to allow Him to pilot us along life's pathway, to allow Him to be the one that's in control of our lives and the one to set the direction in our lives and to take charge of our mind and our heart and our bodies and to fill us with Himself. 
You see, when that does not happen in the life of a Christian, a lot of people find they end up, even though they are believers, but they wind up with some kind of crash in the family, in their home, in their marriage, in their career. Uh, the Bible says that we are commanded to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not a suggestion. It's not optional. It is a necessity. And so this morning, there in your bulletin, there are three points that I want you to pay attention to this morning. Number three, what is the reason for being filled with the Holy Spirit? Point number one, the reason for being filled with the Holy Spirit. What what is the reason that I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? The first reason is this. God's Word commands it. God's Word commands it. You see, that should be reason enough. Many of you have seen the bump, bumper sticker which says, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Well, I have news for all of us today. If God said it, that settles it. No questions answered. God said, do not be drunk here. He says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, Paul is writing to these Christians. God's command for you and to me is to be filled with the Holy Spirit at all times, not just when we go, young people, to a leadership conference, not just young people when we go to Falls Creek, not uh, just young people when we help with Vacation Bible School, church, not just when we come to church, uh, not just when uh, Sundays arrive or Wednesdays arrive, but, but uh, whenever we uh, go to work on Monday morning. You see, it's not just a one-time th thing. The Bible says it uh, commands us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you deal with maybe your spouse or your children in the home, the Bible commands us we're to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Young people, you're to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you go to school on Monday, everywhere we go, we're to, we are to constantly, continuously uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. As I mentioned a few moments ago, it's not an optional thing. It's a divine command of God. It's also a command of God for every believer. You see, when it says be filled, the you, the subject of that sentence is omitted because it's understood that it's speaking about you. And uh, there we see it's in the plural sense. It addresses every single believer. It's for every Christian. It's not just for preachers and teachers and staff members. It's not just for the elite, but it's for every single believer. So the message is for every single person, for everyone who's in the sanctuary this morning, God's Word commands us to be filled with the Spirit. But not only are you and I to be filled with the Spirit because God's Word commands it, but we're also to be spill, filled with the Spirit because the Christian walk demands it. The Christian walk demands for us to be filled with the Spirit. Now, we cannot walk in the Spirit unless first we are filled with the Spirit. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 16, I say then walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, we know when we get saved that we receive this new nature. The old nature that we've been accustomed to is not a done away with, it's not obliterated, it's still there. The old nature, though, once we get saved, is supposed to be nailed to the cross. Let me tell you, the old nature does not have to be in control of our lives, but the old nature is still there, it's still with us. And the old nature will take over unless we are daily being filled with the Holy Spirit. You will be uh, walking in the flesh. You will be uh, trying to do things in your own way and in your own will. You will be attempting to do whatever it is you're doing uh, by your own strength. 
And uh, maybe you'll be trying to witness to someone about Jesus. You will be trying to do that without the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit unless you're allowing the Holy Spirit in your life to move you and control you and to be with you and to fill you each day. Now, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, let me tell you, the monotonous will become the momentous. The unknowable will become the knowable and the indiscernible will be discerned. You will live a life of power. You will have this dynamic energy when you are filled with the Spirit of God. So be filled with the Spirit because God commands it, and the Christian walk demands it. There's no way that you and I can be pleasing to God if we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead our lives, to guide our lives, to control our lives. You see, it really doesn't matter how many boards you serve on. It doesn't matter how faithfully you attend church. It, it doesn't matter uh, how generously you give. It doesn't matter how eloquently you speak. It doesn't matter how beautifully you may sing or play the piano or play some instrument in the band. You and I cannot be pleasing to God Almighty without us letting the Holy Spirit live through us and direct life through us. Let me tell you, it's easy to be in the power of the flesh, but let me tell you, young people, when you're walking in the flesh, rather than letting the Spirit of God lead you and move you, then I can assure you, you your life will not be that powerful, dynamic self that the Holy Spirit wants you to be. So first of all, to be filled with the Spirit, the reason is because God's Word demands it and the Christian life uh, demands for us. The Word commands us, our life demands our walk that we walk with the Holy Spirit. But there's a second thing this morning about the filling of the Holy Spirit. What is the requirement or the requirements for the filling of the Holy Spirit? Now, we know what happened in the book of Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says there was a rushing mighty wind that filled the house where those that were gathered were sitting. Now there appeared over them, the Bible says, cloven tongues like as a fire. Young people, that is, they just looked like human candles from our point of view with that fire above their heads and that symbol of the wind and the fire. And the Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, that they had met the requirement there. Jesus had said to them uh, when he was leaving to go back to heaven, he told them before that to tarry in Jerusalem and wait until the promise came, which would endue them with power from on high. He said, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you will be witnesses unto me, uh, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, receive ye the Holy Spirit and breathe upon them. Uh, you will remember, we looked at that, that Jesus said, receive ye the Holy Spirit, and he breathed upon them. They had met the requirement. You see, that historic and prophetic day came, and the Spirit of God baptized those believers into the body of Christ. They experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then they experienced the, the filling of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you get saved, you and I, we experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, some people get confused. Some people call the filling of the Holy Spirit the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but it's a confusion of terms because what they really mean is the filling of the Holy Spirit is the baptism. Once you get saved, you are baptized into the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. 
and have all been made to drink into one spirit. You see, every Christian is baptized by the Spirit and with the Spirit of God, but not every Christian is filled with the Spirit. There's a great difference because the filling of the Spirit means that you allow God to control your life through the Holy Spirit. Notice what Paul said to the Ephesian Christians. You see, the subject uh, of the passage is passive. Now, while the work of the Spirit is in the present imperative active tense, and that probably doesn't mean a lot to most of us, the subject, the believer, is passive. He's saying, let the Holy Spirit continuously fill you. Look at Ephesians 5, verse 18. Paul says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Now, there are a lot of people who believe that they have to achieve a certain level of spirituality, uh, that they have to learn so many verses of the Bible, or they have to do so many things, and then, and only then, then will they be filled with the Spirit. But the requirement of being filled with the Spirit is very simple. You must permit God to do so. You must per per permit God to have control of every area of your life. Because when you become a Christian, you and I still have our old sinful flesh that we live in. And if you let the old nature have its way, then it doesn't want the Holy Spirit to have control. So I would say step one to being filled with the Spirit is this, initial abandonment. That means to abandon your will, abandon yourself, abandon your way, abandon the desires that you have. You see, you count those things as nailed to the cross so that the Holy Spirit can take control of your life. You see, the filling of the Holy Spirit can be a crisis experience. There may be a point in your life where you realize that you were not filled with the Holy Spirit and you realize that God commanded you to be filled and you were living in disobedience to God and you realize there was something that was missing in your life. Uh, that you didn't have all of the Spirit there is, but you see, the Spirit didn't have all of you. You had that experience where you were baptized into the body of Christ, but let me tell you, you were not living by being filled continuously day after day after day by saying, Holy Spirit, breathe on me today. Holy Spirit, use me today. Holy Spirit, control me today. Control my attitudes. Control my actions. Control my motivation. Control my attitude. Control everything about my heart and life. Let me tell you, you may be saved this morning. You've been baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ, but the Holy Spirit doesn't have all of you that the Holy Spirit wants. Let me tell you, you and I, the main thing we have to realize is we still have this old nature, this old sinful body that we have until it's redeemed someday into that spiritual body like Jesus had after the resurrection. You and I have to fight this flesh every single day of our lives. How do I know that? Because Satan is alive. He's well, young people. Let me tell you, he will do everything he can to defeat you, to try to discourage you. But I want you to know, Jesus said, through the Word, be filled with the Spirit. Let me tell you, I, I get saved. I'm baptized because the Holy Spirit comes into my heart and life immediately when I get saved and the Holy Spirit comes to live in my heart. That means I'm baptized by the Spirit of God into the body of Christ. But how do I live every day of my life? How do I live each day? Am I doing my own thing? Am I controlling my own destiny? Am I saying, you know, uh, yes, Holy Spirit, but I'll do that tomorrow? 
I'm going to do this today because this is, de- this is just a desire of my own nature. Am I going to live my life that way? Or am I each day going to be filled with the Spirit? Let me tell you over there in the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit came, you'll read as you go further in there, and they were filled. You'll read a little further, and they were filled. You'll read a little further, and they were filled. You see, you may be baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ, meaning you got saved, the Holy Spirit came to live within your heart and in your life, but are you being filled with the Holy Spirit? That means are you allowing the Holy Spirit to control your every action of every day of your life? Now, I want to tell you, as you're the pastor of, uh, of this church, Folks, that's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing because of the old sin nature that that we nailed to the cross, but yet we take that old sin nature back. And let me tell you, the devil doesn't want you to have a joyous life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I've come to give them life and to give it more abundantly. But you see, if you want to have the abundant life that Jesus wants you to have, then every day you've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What I mean by that, young people, it's really easy sometimes to uh, have a wrong thought, to have a wrong motive, to have a wrong attitude, to speak before you think, to do before you realize, is this going to offend somebody? Is this going to hurt somebody? Am I being filled with the Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit directing my life, guiding my life? Is the Holy Spirit in control of my mind? And folks, I want you to know we're all human in here this morning. The last time I looked, uh, when I look out over the congregation, I think you're all human. And I know I'm human. And folks, I want you to know the devil will work on you every single day of your life. Because of that old nature, that old sin nature that's there. And unless we are being filled up every day with uh, the Holy Spirit controlling my mind, controlling my actions, it's easy to step aside and let the flesh dictate the plans for the day So the requirement for being filled with the Holy Spirit, it's a continual, it's an initial abandonment of yourself. And it's also a continual abiding. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. You see, are you abiding? Am I abiding each day by allowing the Holy Spirit of the living God to fill me? It's one thing that I've got saved, been baptized through the Holy Spirit living in me into the body of Christ, but it's another thing, am I being filled each day? That means letting the Holy Spirit control my every action this morning. Ephesians 4.30 says, and grieve not, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. How do we grieve the Holy Spirit? It's when we are disobedient to the Holy Spirit. When we step out of, outside of the Holy Spirit's control and we step back into that old fleshly walk of life. And so we can grieve the Holy Spirit whenever we are disobedient. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 says, do not quench the Spirit. Let me ask you a question. Are you quenching the Spirit? Am I quenching the Spirit? Are we continuously being filled every day of our life by saying, Holy Spirit of the living God, breathe on me today, use me today, motivate me today, everywhere I go, everything I do, Holy Spirit, will you take control of the, the uh, uh, handle of the shelf and pilot me throughout this day, every single day of our lives. Young people, we are to say, Holy Spirit, lead me today. Take control today. Third and lastly this morning, uh, th- three things about the Spirit filled life. The reason for being filled is because the Word of God commands it 
And the Christian walk demands it. And then the requirement is initial abandonment of self and continually abiding in the Holy Spirit's leading in our life. And the third thing is this, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the result. What is the result of being filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, number one, you'll live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. You'll live a life that is a life of fulfillment. It's a life of self-abandonment. It's a life that is controlled by the Holy Spirit, and it will bring to you and to me a rewarding a feeling of accomplishing what God would have us do. And when we allow his Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, and direct us every single day of our lives. I think throughout the years, I've heard the Holy Spirit preached on many times in my life. Uh, I've preached on the Holy Spirit before. But I think there was something about the studying of this message this morning that really, really, really pointed out to me the difference of what it means when I get saved, the Holy Spirit immediately comes in my heart, and that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit baptizes me into the body of Christ as we looked at that scripture a few moments ago. But then I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit every single day. And that means letting the Holy Spirit control every area of my life. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Would you stand as we pray together this morning? Would you bow with me? Father God, this is your invitation, Holy Spirit. We've thrown the word this morning. We've thrown the newspaper. And Father, that's all we can do. This invitation is yours and yours alone. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to any of us. Father, Holy Spirit, speak to someone's heart today. If someone needs to come and say, I need Jesus in my heart. I need this baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then I want to be filled every day with the Holy Spirit by letting the Holy Spirit control my life. Maybe there's someone here today who says, I, I need a church home. Father, I pray that you would speak to them. Father, maybe there's just people that need to come down to the altar to pray. Whatever the need this morning, Holy Spirit, move within the heart and life of each person, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.